So welcome everyone to this information session around the 2021 IUCN UNDP Pathfinder Award. Thanks, Wachir, and welcome everybody from my side as well. My name is uh, Marie. I work for IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, coordinating the Panorama Initiative. And uh, one of the um, activities on the Panorama is the Pathfinder Award. So we're very happy to have this information session today where we'll be able to give some background on the award, but then probably most importantly, talk through all the practicalities of the nomination process and answer any questions that you all might have. But let's start with a bit of background on the award itself. So the Pathfinder Award is designed to recognize outstanding solutions for protected and conserved areas. And these solutions might have been developed and implemented by individuals, organizations, or groups. All of those uh, are eligible for the award. But importantly, those are solutions that demonstrate success and can inspire further action. And uh, the aims, uh, some of the aims of the award are to ensure that such solutions receive global attention and recognition, but also to incentivize that they are being adapted and replicated more widely, to also reinforce uh, global policy messages, particularly relating to performance, uh, quality, equity around the management and governance of protected and conserved areas. Uh, so ensure these messages are um, considered in the global frameworks and commitments around area-based conservation. We also hope that the award can encourage further support and investment in applying successful approaches such as these that um, are uh, selected as winners under the award. And more generally, raise the profile of protected and conserved areas and uh, protected and conserved area systems and uh, the stakeholders in charge of managing them. UNDP and IUCN are the lead organizers uh, collaborating on the award, but we also work with a number of other partners, uh, particularly around the various categories where, where we have different partners leading. And I said earlier that uh, the, the award is uh, fully integrated with the Panorama Initiative, which is a, a global learning and knowledge management initiative. Uh, promoting solutions, so uh, good practices on a number of conservation and sustainable development topics. The first Pathfinder Award was held in 2018, so that's when we created it, uh, embarked on this journey, not quite knowing what to expect, and I'm very happy to say that we were quite overwhelmed with the response and with our own success. So we received around 200 nominations by individuals and organizations from all over the world, but particularly from Latin America, South Asia and Southeast Asia. The topic in 2018 was uh, sustainable financing and resourcing of protected and conserved areas. We had four winners. You can see them here in the picture as they uh, proudly receive their certificate. The main winner at the time was the uh, Prespra Orchid Nature Trust or PONT, P O N T, which is a transboundary conservation trust fund that has uh, established long term financing supporting protected areas in six countries of the Balkans. Um, we had also, in addition to Pond, uh, a runner-up, as well as two special commendations. And if you'd like to learn more about these uh, winning solutions, you can read the case studies on the Panorama web platform. The uh, winners were determined in 2018 by a high-level jury, which included, among others, two ministers of environment, as well as the executive secretary of the Convention on Biological Diversity and the heads of agencies of UNDP and IUCN, 
Uh, and this year as well, we hope to have an equally uh, illustrious high-level jury. The award created great visibility for the winners in particular, but also uh, for everybody else who participated. Uh, but particularly the award ceremony, which was held during the opening plenary of the 14th meeting of the um, parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity and the CBD COP14 in Egypt, where um, the spotlight was, was really on these winners and, and their solutions. Um, and that uh, proved extremely valuable in terms of uh, visibility. Now this year, we have launched the second Pathfinder Award. The main difference to last time is probably that there's not only one uh, topic, but there are four categories, so four topics. The first category relates to um, innovative solutions from protected and conserved areas that relate to management practices which can contribute to preserving human health. The second category looks at the use of technology for successful nature conservation in protected and conserved areas. Both these categories are linked to the CBD, to the Convention on Biological Diversity. So both these awards will be handed out at the next conference of the CBD later this year uh, to be held in China. The third category uh, relates to uh, climate change, uh, in particular to nature-based solutions for adaptation. This award category is linked to the UN uh, Climate Convention, the UNFCCC, which will likewise have its next uh, COP, a conference of the parties, later this year. So that's where the award will be given out. And the last category uh, is about land degradation, neutrality and solutions from protected and conserved areas that contribute to that goal. And this category links to the uh, UNCCD, the UN uh, Convention to Combat Desertification, which will have its next COP in 2022. And that's where this award will be given out. So we deliberately link the award to all three of the so-called Rio conventions, so these uh, three global environmental conventions and their upcoming COPs. And uh, there's more detail, of course, behind each of these categories in terms of what qualifies as an eligible nomination. So there are specific criteria for each category. You can find more information on these criteria in the award brochure, which is available on the website. The call for nominations for all four categories is currently open until 15th of July. So that's probably the next key date to remember. And uh, as we're in the middle of this nomination phase, we're, uh, we're holding this info session now, uh, supporting people, hopefully, as they go through the nomination submission. And so if you're not sure yet whether or not you should submit a nomination, here uh, is perhaps some of the incentives that will help you make a decision. There's, uh, of course, the financial grant of 10,000 US dollars for each winner. There will also be a plaque and a certificate of achievement uh, given out to the winners. Then there's, of course, a, a huge element around promotion and visibility of your work or the work of the organization or individual that you nominate if you don't self-nominate. So firstly, this is an esteemed uh, international award, which is led by two leading global uh, environmental or, or development organizations, uh, IUCN and UNDP, with other uh, important partners. So winning the award in itself is, is quite, a, 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 uh, quite a benefit in terms of uh, visibility, but there's also a longer term promotion through Panorama, this initiative that I mentioned earlier, because all solutions that are being submitted as part of the nomination process and that are eligible principally, even if they don't win, will continue to be promoted through Panorama and be available on the Panorama web platform. 
So that is a, a continuous uh, promotion that we can offer beyond the lifespan of the award. The winners will again be invited to the award ceremonies to be held at these uh, three conferences that I mentioned. Uh, this uh, should be very useful in terms of networking, establishing contacts, but also uh, being part of these global policy processes, being able to link your work to these uh, sometimes quite abstract processes, which, which sometimes seem quite removed from the work on the ground. There's also an aspect of, of leverage uh, that, can, uh, that can be relevant uh, when winning the award. So uh, potentially this can help solicit further political and financial investments into the winning approaches and, and projects. And that's something we have heard from the winners of the 2018 award that uh, this was extremely useful in terms of uh, lobbying for further political support for the uh, protected area in question, or also generating further financial uh, investments into their work. And then finally, uh, I'd like to stretch the point again that not only the winners, not only the four winners gain, but there's continuous uh, visibility and provision of knowledge. So the knowledge that you summarize as a case study when you submit your nomination remains available through Panorama for all nominations that are eligible. Uh, and I'll stop here and hand back over to Rochir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would ask uh, Aisa to share her screen for the nominations and we will be discussing nomination process. Uh, okay. Can you see my, the yes. screen nomination form? Yeah, we can see it. It's a nomination form on Survey Monkey. Yes. So, hi everyone, uh, and uh, thank you for joining this webinar on Pathfinder Award. My name is Katarina Haddad, and uh, I am a project coordinator for Panorama uh, Initiative on UNDP site. So, I'm a UNDP staff, and uh, I also support the Pathfinder Award. Uh, organization. Uh, so now we would like to go through the nomination process for the award. As uh, during the previous year, a year in 2018, uh, the nomination process is a two-step two uh, process. Uh, firstly, uh, you will feel you need to fill in uh, the nomination form, uh, which is in Servant Monkey. Uh, site and we have the nomination form in uh, three language versions in, uh, in English, uh, Spanish and French. Uh, you can access uh, the nomination form through, through the call for nomination, which is uh, uh, published on the Panorama website. Uh, so let's go directly to the English version and we will go step by step, uh, uh, you know, like uh, to see what needs to be in there and fill out. So let's go to the point one. Yeah, okay, and, and then, okay, let's just to give you a kind of brief, uh, like once you complete the nominate, nomination form, it's just kind of brief overview of your solution or of kind of a case study of your project. Uh, but then uh, further details, and you will go into more deeper details, uh, then uh, later in the second step, when filling in the solution, a full solution on the Panorama website, Panorama platform. So firstly, let's go to the nomination form. And uh, in the first steps, in, in, a, in, in step number one or two, you just provide a, a title for the solution or innovation you are nominating for the award, and then the, provide a, a brief description of, of the solution and nomination. Please bear in mind that there is a word limit uh, on the description. Uh, it is uh, 200 uh, words, uh, including spacing. So just really provide a brief overview of the solution. And then you go into further details uh, while uh, in the step uh, number two, uh, when, when filling out the solution on the Panorama website. Uh, then let's go to the step uh, or to the point nine, number three, 
uh, it's just basic information, uh, contact information about the nominate, uh, nominator, uh, like a name, organization, country, address, phone number. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then who is being nominated? Uh, you just, you have to tick off uh, whether you are nominating yourself or nominating any uh, individual group or organization. Uh, point number five. Uh, now we are giving a contact information for the person uh, and group or organization who is being uh, nominated. Uh, also pretty straightforward, all the contact basic information. And then point number six, uh, you just briefly explain the context uh, in which you, you know the nominee, our nominee work. Again, it's, it has uh, 300 characters as a word limit. Uh, so uh, please just provide a brief kind of explanation. Uh, point number seven, um, uh, provide, uh, please provide information why you are nominating yourself or group and organization. Uh, what, uh, what are the reasons behind and uh, yeah, why, why you think this solution is, is the one which should be nominated. Uh, and then in point number eight, you just describe your own role in, in, uh, in developing uh, the innovation solution uh, that you are submitting or the role of the group or organization that you are nominating. Those are like really short paragraphs. You just don't, don't have to go really into the de you know, details. Uh, you just provide a few sentences. Uh, in the point number 10, uh, this is the section where you provide description of the protected or conserved area involved in the nomination. Uh, so here you can go into further details, uh, like what are the name of the protected and conserved, conserved areas involved in the nomination. And, and um, because Pathfinder Award is linked to protected, formal protected areas or conserved areas, and you can search if you are not kind of uh, sure whether the area is recorded in the protected planet net or uh, you, you, you can search on the, uh, the WDPA ID on the website, which is provided there in the point number 11. And you can find the, the, the uh, number of the protected, uh, the ID of the protected area on the, on the site. Important, you need to decide for which category you are nominating a solution. Uh, one of those four categories uh, mentioned by, by my colleague Marie. Uh, so we have the, uh, the biodiversity conservation uh, uh, category, then we have the technology category, uh, climate change category, and land management. So which one of these, these are, are, are the relevant to your solution? Uh, the solutions should be linked to some kind of innovation or, or they present innovation within, within its category or area of work. So in, in point number 13, you, you just briefly describe how the solution or innovation you are submitting fits this category you selected. Uh, yeah. So how, what is the linkage between? And the last point. Point number 14, so, so what are the current prospects for follow-up and sustainability? How could the, the award help to your solution or to your project? And uh, what is the likelihood that this solution or innovation could be expanded to other sites, systems, and countries? Why this question? Because, you know, as, you, as, as been said, uh, Pathfinder Award is initiated uh, by, by the Panorama platform or initiative, uh, which is a knowledge sharing and learning platform uh, for global. So therefore, uh, uh, we have this question here stated as well. So this was the nomination form on Monkey. 
which you can reach uh, through the call for nomination. And then we have the second step. Uh, and please, I would like to emphasize here, um, don't stop here at the step number one, because uh, for the nomination to be valid, you have to fill out also the, uh, the solution on the Panorama in, uh, website, Panorama platform. Otherwise, uh, you know, the, the uh, nomination won't go through, even though we will be uh, reaching out to all the nominators and asking them uh, to, to submit the solution as well, just to remind them. Uh, so the step number two would be a solution. And I think Aisa, my colleague, will, uh, will uh, provide you an overview on the solution process and filling up. Thank you, Katarina. Um, so good, um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, um, wherever you are. Yes, I will just um, share with you um, a little bit how to submit solution on the Panorama platform, which is the second step of um, the application. As Katarina just mentioned, the first step is to um, fill in the nomination form. And the second uh, step is to um, upload, contribute a solution on the Panorama website. So I think you can all see my screen. Uh, yes. Yes, okay, thank you. As uh, Marie and Katarina said, we, this is an initiative on the Panorama Solution for a Healthy Planet. It's an, global initiative, um, which is linked to a partnership, but also an online database, which collects solutions and best practices from uh, around the world on many um, thematic, but also contribute to global policies. And also it's uh, a powerful alliance because when we talk about partnership, it's a lot of organizations coming together to be um, only one work together and have a one network. So now I will just uh, explain you a little bit how to contribute a solution on Panorama platform. So I, I hope you, some of you know about Panorama platform. So you have to contribute a full solution because there is two kinds of solution. You have a snapshot and you have a full solution. Um, you have to uh, look at the platform and click on contribute. You will see uh, the link and you have to register, which is the first step. You register and after you log in, because you will get a confirmation when you log in. You have three languages, English, French, and Spanish. You can contribute solution in all those three languages. So this is the Spanish uh, uh, version. You have them in Spanish, but you can you can also translate your solution in different language and contribute them in different um, format. When you click on contribute solution, you would have the full solution, which uh, um, is our case. So this is the uh, the format, how it looks like on the platform, and you have an overview of the formula um, forms on the platform. So now um, overview, you have a relevant portal, uh, challenges, but also when you go down, you have summary. Now it's empty because we haven't yet uh, put anything in, but it will come. So this is uh, for you just to have an idea of what it look like to be on the Panorama platform and contribute new solution, which is the second step. You also have building blocks, if you have more than one solution, you can have your draft solution. Uh, you can see the overview of your edited solutions, your draft solutions. So it's like you have a profile and then uh, you, you, you contribute solutions. So here we have a kind of um, draft solution. Here is a portal. You have to select the protected area portal directly because we have currently seven uh, portals. So the solutions for the Pathfinder have to go under protected area portal. 
which is the one you have to select when submitting solution. And you have the country you select. You have to provide a short summary of your solution. Also the impact. It's really up to you on um, your case studies, how was it, and also picture. It's really a um, lot of supporting document. You can also add a video. Or if you have any document uh, tool, you can add to your solution uh, to support. You also have a part in which you have the main organization. Here we have JZ as main organization, but it can be another organization. It's really up to you. You know better which organization you work with, but also you can have some partners organization which you put in. Uh, we have here other organizations. So when you go down, scroll down, it can also belong not to you, only the solution you have to save with contributors. It's really up to you. And here we have the challenges and beneficiaries. When uh, uh, implementing your solution, uh, the challenges you've been through and the beneficiaries. In the category part here now, you can also uh, uh, elaborate a little bit um, on the region you know, you, you have to uh, select the specific region, also the implementation uh, scale. Uh, here it's national, the ecosystem. These are linked to the filters on the Panorama website and theme, because some people come to the website, they don't look for specific solution, but they go to the theme and the filters and they select according to those filters. It, it makes the search engine uh, more user friendly. But it's also, you can also tell which international target your solution contribute to, um, which can help, or national contribution. It's really a free year to select. Don't forget to save, always save and go to the next, and you will see your progress. Here we have, this is really uh, the part where you put a, a story. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a little bit about literature. You put there uh, a story related to your project impact. And then we have a building block part. Uh, we call building blocks the key success factors of a solution. And you can also have more information in the manual. We have a manual on Panorama website on how to submit solution, it's like down. So here we have three building blocks um, you can edit put more details. Here, this is a de description of the key success factors of the solution and which makes the solution really uh, good, uh, a best one, a best practice. We have also enabling factors we have to specify in the forum. You have short description here, but also lessons learned to allow another person to learn from what happened and you to share your lesson with other person. And please don't forget to um, assign category to allow um, solution seeker to filter and also optimize the search engine. Here you have um, different categories and it's really up to you to choose. Also the scale of implementation, uh, the phase of solution, it's up to you to choose. So now we talk about the building blocks interaction and here you have to tell a little bit how your key success factors interact and how you made them work to have a successful project. After that, this is the preview of a solution. This is how it looks like with the picture, since this is a draft solution, just for you to know, it's a draft and this is your work done. And this is the second step of the application. So when you submit a draft solution, it's the second, it's in the second step. Uh, but after that, um, this is related now to Panorama partners, to us, the solution has to go a review process, which is done internally, which has nothing to do with your application. So I will um, explain you a little bit how is the, uh, solution review process for you just to have an understanding, but it's not linked to your application. So which is an internal work within Panorama. And um, 
I will now uh, also uh, share with you how the review process is done. And this is the cell, we go to that. Okay. Yes, so this is the, the review process. Um, when you submit a solution internally, it has to go review process and you're done with your application. So the published solution is directly um, uh, assigned to a reviewer, which is uh, under a thematic community. In our case, the protected area thematic community. So this is your draft. This is another draft solution we have. So when you, you put the draft, you submit for review. So this is um, how you have to do. You submit, you, you uh, contributed the solution as a second step of the nomination, and then you submit for review. So how is the review done? This is now what I will explain you for you to understand that uh, because you participate in the review. Um, when you submit review, a message is sent uh, to the reviewer and the reviewer will uh, go to your solution. This is how your interface might look like. You have solutions and building blocks. And this is your draft solution, which you um, submitted on Panorama platform. So here um, you can always come back to an overview page. You see your solution. You see how it looks like. And also, most importantly, is that the reviewer will uh, send you a message and you have to reply. You know, it's like a back and forth. And it makes the solution better. It's a quality check. And all solutions on Panorama website uh, have gone through the review process. And you receive a message to say your solution is good, has been published on the Panorama platform. Thank you. But it's, it's uh, it's a process which also needs your full participation and also um, have you to um, add more comments when it's needed. This is how the review is done. So I'd like for you to know what uh, the reviewer focus on, you know, how, how it's done. The reviewer is an expert, which is um, who knows what is quality standard for a successful uh, best practice. You will check. Um, not the wording, but um, the general idea of the solution, but also if it, it, it's, uh, it is in line with um, our uh, quality, but also um, our best practice format. You know, you have a specific format, we have challenges, impact, we have everything um, in the form, and he would like, he would just check if it's confirmed, if you fill all the uh the form boxes but also um how you you approach it this process so this is basically how the review process is and after your solution gets published then you become part of panorama uh, solution uh, provider so thank you katarina and uh I hope we will welcome a lot of new solutions on the platform and review them all together, which also uh, needs your full participation and cooperation. So I hope you, uh, you have some uh, understanding. Here you have um, uh, the building blocks, which you can also see after the, um, the solution gets published. Uh, you can also add some translation to your solution, which is up to you, but also the platform can translate, but, but it's really advised that you uh, publish uh, yourself, your solution in a language you really uh, know. So thank you. And here are our partners. Um, over to you, Katarina. Now I will just stop sharing my screen. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Aisa. So one last point, and we will be going through the selection process. Uh, but before that, I would like to uh, uh, 
invite you to, to send us your questions in the question and answer tab. Uh, just feel free and go ahead and then we will uh, go through them one by one at the end. So uh, selection process, uh, the nominations are submitted uh, by completion of those two step, uh, steps which we have already mentioned, which is the nomination form and the, the solution on Panorama platform. Uh, then one, these two steps are completed. Uh, we will go uh, again, as I said, uh, we will go to nominators if, if they have not uh, submitted a solution, just to remind them that it's, it's, a, it's a compulsory step they have to complete. And then once completed, uh, and you know, it's after the deadline, uh, the eligible nominations are assessed uh, by a team of experts uh, from uh, I, uh, IUCN and UNDP, and then we have also our partners, uh, which are helping out with, uh, with the solutions review in uh, all four categories. Uh, we are uh, the long list uh, of solutions that we are hoping to be done uh, by mid of August, and then we will proceed to a short list, uh, uh, which is like uh, the second assessment. And then this one is conducted uh, by the award review committee, which is like a high jury, uh, high jury of experts from UNDP and IUCN and also other partners. And um, uh, for, for a short list, uh, the short list should be completed uh, by the end of August. Um, um, uh, as mentioned as well, uh, we will then announce the winners, or we will we will announce the short list at the IUCN World Conference uh, at, in in September, and then the winners uh, at the COPs uh, Convention of Parties uh, and uh, CBD COP in October, UNF C COP in November, and then UNCCB COP uh, in, uh, in 2022. Um, what else to say? Uh, yeah, so just uh, bear in mind this deadline. Uh, the deadline is 15 of July. I would like to emphasize there might be an option that we will extend the deadline, but for just for the last category in land, in land management for UNCCD COP, uh, considering uh, the, the, uh, the COP has been postponed uh, to 2022. So, so there might be the deadline extension. Um, and I think this is it. Feel free to ask. And uh, I pass it over to Aisa. Yes, uh, thank you, Kat had said it's, um, we have very tight deadline and we're very sorry for that, but it's also linked to um, different event now um, being organized like later this year. As Kat says, we, da we have, um, each category is linked to a specific uh, international policy event. And um, that's why the first category, um, which are the biodiversity conservation and the technology category are linked to the CBD COP 15. And that's why uh, we would like, this is our uh, aim to give the award during the ceremony. So, and allow them the, the um, prize winner to participate um, in the award ceremony um, at CBD COP uh, re regarding the, the COVID situation and we really hope the person can travel. So um, the, the second category and uh, the third one, CND, climate change, uh, no, sorry, climate change is linked to UNFCC COP26 and which we also think we could do the award ceremony there as a side event. So the, the, the last category, land management category D is linked to the UNCCD COP15. So it's, it's, it's really specific to each uh, policy event, but also um, to allow to, um, has to give or to allow you to have a lot of visibility, but also uh, see how you can get in touch with donors by your own, have a lot of um, networking event and see how you can have the most of uh, um, contact there and have this exposure to international 
stage and international same um, we, it's also a cash price of ten thousand dollars which um, is not a lot of money but it can also help inspire and also um, help you to do something with um, your project or uh, deliver on some objectives, even if the project ended, but also the recognition, which would stay with the Panorama website and um, all the communication around, which will give you a um, lot of um, visibility. So uh, yes, um, deadline 15 of July. So Kat, we have questions in the chat. Um, I don't know, you, you, you talk a little bit in the selection um, process. So I think someone asked about the CAD, or ask um, if we have a word template. Um, Sorry, I just, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you can you hear me? We do have a word template. Uh, I was trying to send it through the chat, but it seems it's impossible. I mean, it's, it's not possible to send any documents through the chat. Uh, so uh, I just uh, uploaded uh, the document on the Swiss transfer comp and send you a link. So mm -hmm. feel free to reach to, to reach out to those documents through the link. Yeah. Uh, it's a good yeah. practice to pre to to, to yeah. draft the uh, nomination uh, in word document and then you know just to upload it, uh, not upload it, but fill it out uh, in the survey monkey once it is ready. Also, just to emphasize that we have a, a mail list, which is pathfinderaward at iucn.org. In case you have information, you would like to know something. Also, if you would like to ask the survey monkey form or the solution template form, we can send you to uh, by email directly. Um, you can just give us a shoot and send an email. We can share with you all document. Um, so, I said we have the, the uh, call for nomination in three languages, English, French, and Spanish, but also the nomination forms are also in English, French, and Spanish. So these are the three official language of the partnership. And then also to give um, everyone the same chance, um, no matter of the language. We, we sorry, it's just three languages, but um, this is um, the official language of the partnership. So we also have uh, Kat is asking again if uh, an organization is allowed to submit more than one nomination solution against different categories. Uh, yes, um, if you have a lot of um, case studies, like you, you have, um, for example, let me take the example on IUCN or UNDP, they, they have offices all over the world and they're implementing a lot of um, project so they can of, you can of course apply if you have a lot of case studies because it's about case studies it's about um, impact and you show that your project was a very good one so feel free to share with us and apply for the prize so I don't know Kat, if you would like to add on that yeah yeah you can just feel free to just to go ahead with more nominations I can picture even that one one project or one solution could be nominated in into two various categories, but of course you have to select which category is, is the primary one and which is the secondary one. Then we, we will see uh, yeah, uh, how, how, it, uh, how it is linked to each category. But of course, if you have more case, more case studies, just go ahead with more nominations as one yeah. thing. Even in the same categories, right? If, if you know, be, because the, the solutions are not the same, you cannot um, um, nominate one solution for four case that for for four categories because you just have to tick one box when defining the category for which you're applying for. So the the, the nomination form is very strict. You cannot you can only tick on one box. So. Uh, but if you have more solution and you have uh, we have four categories and feel free, but you cannot one solution, you cannot assign for the to all four categories. So which is this is like to clarify a little bit. Wow, questions also. Mm. Roel is asking um, the award category C and D is only related to solution tested done in established and legalized conserved or protected area. So Kat, or should I? 
can go ahead, feel free. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, uh, the CMD climate change and land management. Um, just for you to understand a little bit. So um, we don't consider a solution are really specific case study. These which um, have a demonstrated impact and um, have shown that um, they have been implemented. So if you, you, you have like a proposal, so we don't consider a proposal a solution. Uh, we don't consider a publication a solution, just for you to know. So a solution is really a case studies project you implemented or a tool uh, which has been implemented in a specific geographic area. So you share your tool on Panorama website. That's why we do the review. So it's really to make sure um, the solution is in line with um, our quality uh, standard and to see how realistic it is. And of course, we trust um, our solution provider that all information they're providing are true. And um, we don't do the police checking everything. We just have experts and it's not the secretariat who do the review process. We have um, experts who, who do this uh, review on a voluntary basis. So they are with us uh, when you submit, as I show you, um, you submit uh, your solution for review and the portal admin, the protected area portal admin, which is a thematic community in which your solution is under, will assign the solution to a reviewer. So the reviewer will go through your solution and, and just see if all boxes um, have been uh, filled correctly and if the information are accurate and there is an harmony. And then if not, we don't um, refuse, it's not rejected. Uh, the reviewer will send you comments, but just for you to know, the review is not linked to the nomination process. So the nomination process is um, the form and uh, the solution submission. So when you submit the solution until the 15th of July, you consider it. So you submitted your solution, but the review can come after, you know, you can get comment from the reviewer after to make the solution better before publication just for you to, to understand. Now, what we need with the application process is for you to submit first. This is the first step. Submit your solution for us to see that you've nominated and you've submitted. And then even if uh, you submit until the 15th of July, it's fine, you have submitted. So the review can come after. So you can uh, get a comment and then um, uh, reply to the comment of the reviewer. And uh, to reply to your comment, Ruel Bosma, yes, the solution has to be tested, uh, implemented, and uh, est established, yes, I would say yes, not only for the CND categories, but for the all four categories. And if you need more information, you can also write to the um, email address and yes, Kat, you would like to add something. No, just you, you mentioned everything. It just needs to be, it, it's like a project which needs to be completed and you need to to, to justify why, do, why you submit the project and what is the impact on the ground of the project. So it, of course it must be completed project and Pathfinder uh, uh, yeah, Award uh, is uh, includes the formal protected areas and then uh, the conserved areas uh, which are kind of referred to as O OECMs and OECMs stands like uh, for other effective area-based conservation measures um, based on uh, IUCN uh, terminology. So yeah, so it's protected areas, conserved areas, and the, the, the solutions must be completed. In short. Yes. Yeah. That, yes. Yeah. That's very true because um, we consider all the effective uh, area-based conservation measures. So um, it's in the nomination form, uh, which means territories, area managed by indigenous people, local community uh, to maintain natural and or near natural ecosystem and privately conserved areas also, which are managed by a specific um, 
conservation objective, but also recognized as protected area under a national um, legislation, which is really important for us. And uh, of course, it's OECM and also military lands and water portion of a military lands are primarily managed by the purpose of defense, but with specific uh, secondary objectives, um, focus on the conservation of biodiversity. So it's you, you have all the information in the nomination form up there. When you read through, you will have this paragraph I just read, and then you, you can uh, select uh, um, the, the solution and OECM, no problem, then you can submit. Yeah. Okay. I think we can go to the, another question. <laughs> Interesting. You go? Yeah. Do okay. you give, uh, Mushana uh, Iman is asking, do you give a feedback to those who happen not to succeed with their applications and highlight key reasons so they can be used as a basis for improvement? Thanks. Well, um, uh, I mean, once your solution or, uh, or nomination, first you submit nomination, then the solution. Once your solution is published on the platform, it means it's good, it's good solution. Uh, we don't publish on, on a platform solutions which firstly are not relevant uh, to the panorama platform and then secondly if they are not if they don't, have not shown any impact or innovation on the ground so once it is published of course you know like it, it means you are you know, on a good way you are you, you have a good solutions and project then in that case we don't go back to you and, and we don't explain the reason why the, the award was not given to you I mean, we, we cannot go back to, to all, I don't know how many hundreds uh, nomi nominations, but uh, there is a visibility benefit for each solution published on the platform, because uh, then, you know, like it's your solution is there, it's published on the platform uh, and it's there for, for the global audience, which can access it and see. And also you can then use this visibility for your, uh, for your further PR of the solution. So saying that no, we don't go back to, to solutions, saying why they did not succeed, uh, did not succeed uh, in, the, in, the, in the award process. Uh, yes, just to add on that, Kat, we, we also received some, you know, a, a question on the, with the email, you know, someone sent a, a question to, to ask if, um, the solution is already on Panorama uh, website. Um, if uh, she or he can also uh, like only fill the nomination form and um, if the solution will be considered. Uh, so we think yes, uh, which is also to give incentive to solution already on the Panorama platform. If you think your solution is good and uh, you can apply to uh, the four categories. So then, uh, please go ahead if the person is listening to us, like go ahead and, 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 and um, propose your solution. But in this case, you only will have to fill in the form, the nomination form and give us the details. And just to add on uh, Mushan Ivan uh, uh, question and what Kat already said. Um, yes. Uh, most um, usually you receive a generic email uh, saying that sorry um, your your nomination we you haven't been selected uh, because we receive a lot of good nomination and this time yes it can happen because um, Mori just um, said that last time uh, we had more than 200 solutions so uh, writing one by one to all solution, uh, to all nominators might be book, a lot of works, but if someone is really interested to know why he hasn't been selected and ask us to give him or give her the specific reason why. So then uh, you have to write to the uh, email which will send you the message and then ask. But uh, we will also see how to overcome this and send uh, individual feedback. But if not possible and you really need your individual feedback, I think you can write directly to the email and ask an individual feedback. And sometimes it's not everyone who would like to have individual feedback. It's really 
uh, one by one, it, it's on individual cases. And if it's yours, please uh, send us an email and let us know that you would like. And the reasons, the key reason why and how they can improve next time, I think it's a good learning opportunity also to know why you haven't been selected and um, have the feedback. Uh, yes, Kata, I don't know if you would like to go for the next question. I think we answered already this one. Uh, also, category C is only for solution tested, done, and recognized and legalized conserved, conserved and protected areas. Yes, there must be completed the solutions. So. Solutions, we mean projects or case studies, and they must be already completed so you can uh, show the, the results and uh, yeah, justify, justify the impact on the ground. So of course, yeah, it must be and legalized, conserved and protected areas. Again, we I think we explained that already we taken that, that it must be formal protected areas or OSEMs uh, conserved areas, which has more categories there under OSEMs. Uh, just feel free to go to COPRA nominations and you can find all the answers there. Or just if you have more, further questions, feel free to, to write us uh, to the Pathfinder Award at uh, IUCN.org. Yes, that's true. And uh, you also, when you go to Panorama website, you have all the information there. Um, we have a news article, you can, you can have all the, the call for nominations and you can have all the documents. And uh, tested, uh, this is, I think, um, BOSMA, this is not only linked to um, category C. I think um, all categories are linked to protected and conserved area. Of course, if it's a conserved, protected and conserved area, it's, it's, it's really fine. And, and this is exactly what um, we're looking for. Protected and conserved area, it's, it's a dry wording and we will be welcome to receive your solution. It's only for category C, but um, all categories are, are linked to innovative protected and conserved area solution. It's, it's always that. So like I will perhaps um, um, remember here the, the four categories. Uh, for category R, we have biodiversity conservation, uh, which is looking for innovative protected and conserved area solutions that enhance people's health and well-being and could inspire ways to build back better following the COVID-19 pandemic. And category B, technology category, is protected and conserved area solutions for innovative and outstanding use of technology for successful nature conservation. And the climate change category, which is category C, is looking for innovative nature-based solution, NBS for adaptation. And the category D, uh, the land management category, uh, we're looking for protected and conserved area solution that contribute to land degradation neutrality. So now you have all the four category and it's really all about protected and conserved area. And the, 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 the C is about innovative nature-based solution for adaptation. So you, you also know it's, it's a well-known topic. Um, yes, cut over to you. <laughs> yeah, I think, which one is that? Uh, but I think so. Um, okay, uh, I think we, let, let's read what, what, what is meant by conserved areas here, because I think we have a lot of questions here and then a lot of unclarities about conserved areas, uh, OACMs, uh, because also there is some follow-up question on that. So OACMs, like other effective area-based conservation measures, are sites which include the territories and areas managed by indigenous people or local communities to maintain natural or near natural ecosystems. This is the first kind of category site. The second one is privately conserved areas, which are managed with a specific conservation objective, but which are not recognized as protected areas under national legalization, legislation, sorry, legislation. And then the thirdly, military lands and waters, 
or portions of military lands and waters that are prim primarily managed for the purpose of defense, but with specific secondary objectives focused on the conservation of biodiversity. So these areas or sites are, co are considered for OACMs and if you are either protected, formal protected areas or this OACM area, you are, you are welcome to submit your solution and nomination. I th and I think I answered with this one also the last question we had. Uh, no, no, not the last. The... Yeah, I think we also have Cecile. Um, if uh, Cecile would like, Cecile is working, I think I haven't introduced myself, right? <laughs> oh, I did. So just to come again, uh, I'm Isa Traurig. I work for Panorama Partnership Secretariat at IUCN site. Um, and my colleague also Cecile um, is working for IUCN, but is in charge of solutions. So yes, Cecile, if you can just yeah, introduce. Hi everyone, I'm joining late. Yes, yeah, so I'm Cecile working with the Global Protected and Conserved Areas IUCN, based in HQ and co-coordinator of uh, Protected Area Portal on Panorama. So thank you, Cecile. Uh, we just have a question that um, uh, if um, testing solution, you know, Roel Bosma is asking if testing solution in conserve area is often not allowed, while it solution may be very relevant. Okay, so I will just give the first um, uh, cut. Cut really well explained the OECM case here, and I think you, you just have to just uh, remember that um, if not allowed, what does mean? Like your solution haven't been, uh, uh, you know, it, it's one solution, a lot of solution. We don't know because you put solution in plural, but if we're talking about a lot of solution and then it, they have to um, have been implemented before, you know, have a demonstrated impact on the ground. And if you said that not a lot, which means your solution haven't been implemented. So we, we don't know what does mean in your language, but you can also elaborate further for us to know and, and perhaps give more clarification. Um, also, CNOT could submit anything that is done outside conserve or protected area, even to very relevant for the Gulf. Ah, okay. Um, now the person sends <laughs> clarification. So uh, we are very sorry, but the, the instructions are clear. The solution. Uh, has to be a protected and conserved area solution. So we really don't mean what you mean, but outside conserve or protected. Uh, what does it mean? It's like, um, what kind of area do you mean? Because we accept OECM privately uh, managed areas by indigenous people uh, or an area under national legislation. But um, if, your, your solution is outside. So we really need, again, more clarification because it's clearly stated that it's an in, we need innovative, protected and conserved area solutions. And if it's outside, so what kind of solution then you mean? Uh, I don't know if Cecile and Catherine would like to add here more. No. Okay. So we have an anonymous attendee, um, an initiative that does not manage a protected area, but works in several officially recognized protected areas. Are we eligible or do we need to represent manage protected area? Uh, so, I think I answered that with my answer already when I stipulated what yeah, is- Yeah, you can just elaborate yeah. further, yeah. Already answered. 
but can you please repeat because perhaps new person are joining they 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 haven't heard and then you can just repeat and you know the person was yeah i i think i was reading also this uh, for this question uh um so again oacms are the conserved areas like sites like territories and areas managed by indigenous people or local communities to maintain natural and near natural ecosystems then there are privately conserved areas which are managed with a specific conservation objective, but which are not recognized, again, not recognized as, as protected areas under national legislation. And then lastly, there was, those are the military lands and waters or portions of military lands and waters that are primarily managed for the purpose of defense, but with specific secondary objective focuses focused on the conservation of biodiversity. So I think I answered this question. Okay. So, um, yes, yes, Cecile, please. Are you talking about the anonymous attendees? Yes, question? yes, totally. He just or she wants to know if he or she has to be like an official Project protected manager. area manager, but uh, you can be an NGO working inside um, protected areas without being the manager but you have activities to to help or you co-manage and you can you can be eligible right you don't have to be the protected areas manager to be eligible even though you work in a like a natural park not an oecm <laughs> right so i think i don't see the, yeah yeah Go, Cecile, if you want to give more details, please go ahead. No, I don't have more details, but I, I, I think the question was, do we need to be an official manager of a park? But no, you can be an NGO or another initiative, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we receive also uh, a request um, uh, in our mailbox, like uh, if it's, um, it's someone who is consultant for the project is an individual. So the project is, you know, like finished done and they, they have uh, impact on the ground. And But it's been a long time ago, the person worked on the project and now um, he would like to know if he can nominate the solution. Um, and this is perhaps links to when getting the prize, he will get the 10 key and then, I think this is something to discuss, but first um, we encourage you to submit the solution. You know, like, like first um, submit the solution because it, it has already been implemented and you know about the details. And in case uh, you get the prize, it's up to you to reach out to the organization and tell them hey, the solution uh, was recognized by has a one of uh, five funded award winners. So, now I just would like to um, uh, let you know uh, that uh, we received this, that it's really, we, we don't interfere there. What we would like is to have a solu the solution, uh, it, um, do the evaluation and see if it can get the price. It's really, uh, in any case, we need someone to um, fill in the nomination form but also uh, submit as a full solution on Panorama website. So if you feel that your solution is a good one and you can um, apply on behalf of the project team, uh, yes, please go ahead and, and let us know. Um, so I don't know if uh, Katarina, I think you received this, um, this question also, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you answer it. Okay, uh, so yes, um, we receive um, initiative that not manage protected, but works in several office. Yes, so uh, yeah, okay, Cecile, the person is satisfied that you, you really answer the question. So, um, Uh, yes, initiative must be necessary based in a protected area. Yes, we, I think we already answered this question also. I think a lot of questions are almost the same. Uh, they overlap, 
and uh, we have to repeat the same answer um, again and again, but it's not a problem. And uh, now there is another one on the deadline. So because the two um, last categories are, were launched after, so and then all the deadline are the same. Uh, I think, yes, this is something, uh, as I said, we would like to um, have the good timeline and the right timeline with the global policy event and which is really important for us that you submit solution on time. And now we have less than one month still, but we hope you could um, upload your solution. Uh, to date, we, we received more than 100 nomination already. And then we think uh, more and more are coming. And that's why we're doing this info session to uh, let you know and, and feel free to ask questions. Uh, Cecile, I don't know if you would like to see a little bit on the protected area portal and your role a little bit here yeah, for them to understand that they have to submit solution on the protected area portal. So you mean when they go on Panorama? Mm -hmm. So what's the process? No, I just explained uh, the, the, the contrib solution contribution process. But, oh, okay. Uh, you know, the different portal, they, they really have to select protected area portal and, and not. And uh, as I said, uh, we have coordinators and you, your role has coordinator a little bit. So once we receive uh, new solutions in our portal, so in protected areas, we receive like an automatic email notification from the platform and we can access it and review. So the idea is to either we go with external reviewers who are experts of the region or, or the topic. And uh, once the review is done, so we can rate the solution, either sometimes it needs some revision or it's good to be published. So if it needs revision, it goes back to you, to the contributor who update and, and refine and submit again. And once the solution is good, then we can publish it. And then it's, it's uh, accessible online by everybody. Uh, and that's it. And you can uh, uh, you can always uh, come back and update your solution, uh, even in one year or two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. I haven't touched, but like, yeah, the solution stays on Panorama website, and you can update. <laughs> um, I think the session was scheduled for one hour. Uh, so I think now um, we just. 13 minutes has a last holder, but we cannot go beyond. And it's um, now 14 minutes past, 15 minutes past um, three. And um, I think we will stop here. And yes, please feel free to send questions. And um, I will just put the link to the news article on Panorama website for you to read, have all the information and now give the floor to Kat and our partner from UNDP side. And if she would like to say some word. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying thank you very much for your participation and uh, your questions. Uh, uh, I hope we answered your questions. And if you have any more coming up uh, while filling out the nomination form or solutions, just feel free to, to write us uh, on the Pathfinder report at uh, IUCN.org. And we will we review it uh, on a daily basis and we respond on a daily basis as well. So looking forward to see your nominations. <laughs> Cecile, you have something to say? Please. No, just good luck to you all. And thank you for <laughs> contributing a uh, solution, participating in the award. Yes, thank you. And like, um, as you know, that we are recording this session, we will post it on Pandama website for uh, those who could join us this afternoon and you will have it um, along. You can always come back to the website and watch it. So it's there for you. And then, um, yes, as my colleagues, uh, good luck. Um, it's not, we cannot have uh, hundreds of winners, but like the five, the four winners would 
uh, be really happy. So, and good luck to everyone and see you perhaps next year for the award because it's an annual award. We do it and hopefully we have a lot of person applying also next year and perhaps another info session next year. In the meantime, thank you for your active participation and all the questions. And uh, yes, feel free to send us an email to pythonderaward at Thank you.